The following podcast is a next level production. He is going to need Khonshu. Break his Shakti. It's in the chamber of the gods. And you can be my avatar. Mark says wonderful things about you. No, no, no. I'll fight him on my own. It's time to go! Panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this week is going to be a spoiler full podcast about Moon Knight Episode 6. And I'm sure, obviously, everybody has watched it because this has been long and anticipated for so long right now. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've been waiting and then we're a little late in recording, so uh, life happens that way, but uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah well, we're here now and we're mm-hmm. going to talk about Moon Knight Episode 6. Gods and Monsters. And the synopsis for that, Steve? Sure. As Moon Knight joins the fray, Steven and Khonshu must work together to stop Ahmet. I, I don't think that's really accurate. It was more like Layla and Khonshu were working together to stop. I, or th- Layla, a- Terouet, and uh, yeah. Khonshu, and Mark and Steven. Yeah, it's it's really weird. Like, it, it did, I didn't get, this synopsis doesn't work for me like all, the rest of them have been vague but mm-hmm. this is just not even like doesn't even make sense <laughs> you know uh, but okay whatever imdb you know it's that's your thing not mine oh okay it was not for imdb <laughs> uh, yeah, i don't know so. what disney plus had but you know it's it's fine yeah but, yeah but the thing is is that you know we got an ending to this particular mini series as they call it because mm-hmm. we have been told multiple times apparently over the course of this that this was a miniseries. It, it's not going to be another season. Just mm-hmm. like with uh, Hawkeye and uh, was there another one? Oh, yeah. Wanda and uh, Wanda yeah, Vision. WandaVision, WandaVision yeah. and Hawkeye. I think Falcon and the Winter Soldier probably is just a, a, a one-off. One-off. You know, we know Loki. We're going to get a season two because they've already announced that. Yes. Um, the only, you know, that's, there's some, some bad things about this that I didn't like. I, I didn't like that we got no card saying that Moon Knight would be back or anything like that. Mm. So I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed. There's, but I'll, when we get into our points and talk about actually start discussing the episode, I'll, yeah. I'll get into some of my disappointments with it. All right. Cool. Now, with that, we'll, we'll move into our initial thoughts. So what are your initial thoughts of the overall episode? Yeah, I, you know, I, I did. I I loved it. It just it was short, and there were so many things that they they kind of wrapped up, but then at the same time, they they left things open. And I've watched it three times now. I just watched it uh, for the third time just before we started recording tonight, so yeah. I got it fresh, like fresh in my mind. But uh, it there's a lot here. There's a lot to to kind of you know. Figure Consume. out and and, and and talk over and <laughs> yeah. um uh so yeah it's just I, I've got a few little things that I've quibbled with but uh, overall I, I enjoyed it and I thought it was a good end to the series yeah same here I, I thought it was a great episode and loved what we had some sort of ending but mm-hmm. thankfully this is not the end of us seeing Moon Knight within the MCU so this is basically our introduction. And I think they kind of casually said it during interviews, saying that this was a one-off, but does it mean that, you know, Oscar Isaac can't come back as Moon Knight again? And the way that they ended it makes it that way so they can pull him in for other movies, you know? Yeah, I, I'm, you know, I'm I'm hesitantly hopeful about it because they have, I think Feige has, has said that all these characters that we've, that we've seen here in the Marvel kind of Disney universe are going to be in future MCU, you know, projects. Yep. So we did, if you've watched Doctor Strange, you know, and, and what's, what's in Doctor Strange, but I'm just like, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to stay hopeful that we're going to get more Moon Knight in the future. Same here, yeah. Um, yeah. But I've got some, there's some things that I'm that I'm troubled by. Oh, I'm troubled by it too. <laughs> same you, same as you. So, it's the same feeling. 
All right, so with that, we'll move into our top fives or highlights, or our favorite highlights of the episode of Moon Knight. Finish it. Leave neither of them alive. While he lives, so too does she. I have to finish this. If not, I'll never be free. Mark! You have a choice. You are free. The choice is vengeance. We cannot take the chance that Amit finds a way out. She will kill again. I sound just like her. You want them dead? Do it yourself. So, Steve, do you want to start us I'm off? Sure. I'm going to go. I'm going to jump right to the, the post credit scene. I want to talk about this this scene because <laughs> I, for me, I, I have not I haven't watched any other videos or seen any other speculation about what how Moon Knight is going to be brought into like the bigger universe. But I, I think the way my take is with that with that post credit scene is mm -hmm. that Khonshu has not truly released Mark and Steven, he still has some kind of hold. Hold of. Yeah. Yep. And I, I want to see if he still has powers. Uh, you know, the, the Moon Knight and the Mr. Knight kind of superhero characters. Are they are they going to have those powers even though they think Khonshu is not in control? They're kind of questioning the idea of this third identity. We get that moment uh, there at the end of the episode, and we'll talk more about that later on. But there's that moment when yeah. when uh, Layla kind of releases herself from the car, and she's like, "What the hell was that?" And Mark says, "I blacked out." And you know, Mark says, "Stephen, mm -hmm. that wasn't you, was it?" And so we we still have this third identity, and obviously we we had him identified now as Jake as Jake Lockley, and he is the yep. more brutal. Obviously, and you know, I you were right last week. I have to give you props, man. I did not, re I did not recognize until I went back and rewatched episode five. I didn't notice the change in his voice and his speaking, oh, yeah. his manner of speaking when he was in the doctor's yeah, it office. Was, it was crazy. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this time, though, it was a lot thicker. This time, when we see him switch mm -hmm. in and out of that Jake, because there's a moment when after. Khonshu says he's released him, and we have this this moment where I think we get all three of them in the doctor's office. There, we get Stephen, Mark, and Jake because there's because mm -hmm. obviously he calls him Doc. He says, "I think there's something going on here, Doc," and you can tell he he really like. I think it was more lighter in the earlier episodes, just so it didn't give it away. But in this episode, mm -hmm. they went full bore, and like he's you definitely can tell the difference, the change in his voice with with Jake. Yes. So, uh, so actually, and so I'm 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 excited to see how they're going to bring Moon Knight into kind of the bigger area. And I want to see if it's going to play out in this phase or if we're going to have to wait, you know, how far, how far, how long are we going to have to wait before we see Moon Knight again? Well, we could actually see him come into, because they actually mentioned something about a uh, werewolf by night show. And if they do that, they could actually easily bring in Moon Knight into that because that's, where the first night, uh, well, first night, uh, first appearance yeah. of Moon Knight was literally basically he shows up within that particular, uh, mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. And honestly, that would make more sense. We, we always, uh, I was theorizing at the, at the very beginning, a lot of people were saying, oh, wait, oh, that's Werewolf by Night in the very beginning when we saw that whole thing oh, yeah, that the was jackals. going on within yeah. the museum. The, yeah, the the actual Egyptian jackal. So, and then, you know, we were basically said, no, that's wrong. Okay. So now we might have that where he goes through some sort of, uh, it, it won't be a full werewolf by night show where we have Mark, Stephen, and Jake all in one body. And they have to go through their turmoil and have to deal also with the werewolf by night story as well. So it'd be cool if they actually do that and then bring them both into the MCU, which would be very yeah, interesting. I haven't heard any rumors of, of any of any of that, so But that those are my thoughts and I'm just oh, spitballing, okay. you know, if Marvel or if Marvel Disney was actually thinking of something, that would be the best way 
to actually resolve a lot of the issues. If they do it within MCU itself, the actual cinematic universe where it's on in film and everything, they would have to devote at least a good half hour based upon Moon Knight itself in order to resolve these issues that we've had within these particular episodes. If not resolve them within let's say all the other Disney Plus shows that we're going to get through Marvel, like with She-Hulk and like I said, Werewolf by Night and possibly uh not Hawkeye. Oh, what was the other one Falcon you mentioned Winter before? Oh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. You know yeah. that episode. Yeah, like like you said, there's there's so many things they could do. I'm I'm, and that's and that's one of my concerns. You just brought up is the fact that when they bring or if they bring Moon Knight back into another project, they're going to have to retell or somehow give us some backstory of the people that haven't seen these six episodes. That's what my concern is about bringing him into the bigger universe is that they're going to not do it because they're going to have to do too much backstory to fill in people who haven't seen these six episodes. That That is true, but maybe actually Marvel Disney could actually do something that is something that is key to reading comics. And if any true comic book reader that's out here, and this, this is why we're panels to pixels. <laughs> podcast <laughs> if you think about it uh, when you open up a comic and there's like an ongoing thing and you jump into the actual story that's going on that you pick up a comic and you've never picked up a comic before they will have a key thing within the panel itself saying a star or an asterisk and it says see issue whatever of this particular thing if they actually do that for every movie that they do at the very bottom corner of the film and treat it as if it was a comic book. They could actually go back and go watch those particular episodes and then be filled in and then pay more mm-hmm. into yeah. Disney Plus. Yeah, that's, and what I'm that's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's know? what the concern the concern that I have is is that and yeah, we'll just have to see. It's 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 in their hands now. Yeah. So. It is it is in their hands, and I'm sure with the with Kevin Feige and everything that he's been doing, he is the ruler of the Marvel U- Cinematic Universe, so I've been happy with everything that I've gotten, and I'm hopeful for everything that I get to see, too, because th- there's so much more that we're looking forward to, and we have so much more to look forward to as far as the movies as well as the shows that we're getting on Disney+. Plus. So I, I'm I'm thinking they did very well within this particular overall series, and I'm happy with that. Okay. So what's your first what's your first discussion point? Oh, my first discussion point. <laughs> we kind of went off topic. Uh, uh, seeing both Amit and Kanchu together within the episode and do battle mm-hmm. with one another. Oh, that was amazing! The the huge battle uh, as Con- uh, Amit was. Gaining all the souls and everything and being huge and bigger. The battle between them as giants Mm -hmm. was amazing. Huge kaijus just battling it out over some sort of pyramids in Egypt and everything. You know, my kaiju, you know, I'm a huge Godzilla fan, as all you guys know. I, I just love the fact that they were just battling it out and... To see the avatars fighting just below them and at the same time, it just reminded me of like a Godzilla film. Because you get the human aspect of it where they're battling, but you have the huge kaiju aspect of it all in one particular episode. So I was like ecstatic. I'm like, I love this. I watched it on my phone during a break time at work. So I watched the whole thing. And then... I came home and I watched it on my big screen. I was like, oh, this Mm -hmm. is amazing. I got to watch this a whole bunch of times. So I just love those particular scenes particularly because they were so amazing just to watch. And the fact that, you know, you not only have two avatars, you have Mm -hmm. three. You have Mark and Steven as Moon Knight or Mr. Knight. And then you got Harrow. And then on top of that, you got Layla. And that to me was yeah. amazing. Yeah, I this was one of mine as well. Was the whole just that seeing those two gigantic, you know, uh, gods going at it and, and fighting each other there in the background is just with at one point, and it's 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 kind of a 
like for me, this third time watching it, I really kind of keyed in on the moments when you saw kind of Khonshu starting to prevail. And then, but then she turns it around. Ahmet takes, and at one point, you know, she takes his scepter from him and she's got his moon, yes. his crescent moon scepter. And she's about to like kill him with it. If, if Layla and, and Mark Correct. hadn't, uh, yep. hadn't got her sucked into Harrow's, Hero's body, but uh, yeah, it was it was great to see those two fighting. It was great to hear. You know, it was one of those moments. I don't think I noticed it really until the second or third time that there's a point in there when Khonshu just he admits to Mark. He says, "I can't, I can't stop her by myself. She's too powerful. I need mm -hmm. your help." And exactly. and so that's what that gives you know that gives kind of Stephen and Mark kind of leverage there in a way. I mean, it doesn't really end up working for them, but <laughs> it shows that Khonshu mm -hmm. needs help. Yeah, he's not yeah. the one in charge. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm right there with you. That was a, a great fight scene of just all the things going on. Like from the moment there's there's that fight scene inside the temple where they're kind of mm -hmm. equal, and then as soon as Khonshu senses that Mark is back, you know, in his body, he poofs away, and, and Ahmed kind of hits the stone there, and and so then they have the next fight, like you said, where they're gigantic, and it's just yeah, really really cool. I loved it. That was yeah. that was one of mine as well. So I'm I'm uh, I was ecstatic about that whole thing. Same here. The next one I've got, and uh, we're kind of going round and round here because we both have similar points, but I loved the way they edited and the switching of the different personas, especially during that that fight scene when they're switching from Moon Knight to Mr. Knight oh. and – just the ease yeah. <laughs> that we we've, we've seen here with that Mark and Steven have kind of developed this this kind of working relationship kind of thing you know there's that that moment yes. after they get done um, negotiating with Khonshu where he says well how are we going to get to Cairo and and Steven goes well Mark I guess you're going to have to take this one and then he he changes back into Moon Knight and flows out the cape and he's able to fly and it's just just really really cool mm -hmm. and then we see there's that moment during the fight where he throws the, the truncheon and Harrow kind of bats it away from him and it's so it's Mr. Knight throws the 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 truncheon and then uh, it's Moon Knight that catches it it just was really really cool I just loved those transitions that we got to see and the fact yeah. that we have we haven't seen this we've seen kind of hints of this alliance forming between Mark and Steven but we haven't but really yes. here we see yeah. it fully developed it's yeah. solidified yeah. yeah, to where they both they they're both easily in each other's kind of skin, and they're talking to each other, which I don't think is necessarily a a real symptom of DID. But hey, we'll go with it. Exactly, and that's actually mm -hmm. my next point. You actually <laughs> pulled it. You know, you don't see my notes, so uh, you actually pulled it from it. So yeah, this made me love the Steve Mark duo. You know, I just love the fact that they do respect one another. And Mark realizes that Stephen is his, in his life because he created him and he does care for him like a brother. And they're able to work together within this body and this vessel because they know each other. And they're able to collaborate with how to use this power as well. And I just love those events within the episode. But the one thing that brought a tear to my eye was Mark going back for Stephen oh. in the sands. Even though he has achieved peace at that point at the reeds, and he gives that amazing speech to Stephen as he is in the sand, holding his hand, and then even Mark says it. He goes, "I I gave this huge speech," <laughs> and it's like, and it shows the heartfelt companion to Mark that Stephen is, and to me that was really what meant the most to me because it shows like a brotherly love within himself because they are the same person but just two different personalities and that and the fact that they're able to do it on a a drop of a dime and are able to just change and when they were talking to Kanchu and negotiating and talking at that point and when Kanchu says I need you and he goes oh I have mm -hmm. to deal with you Yep. Yeah, it's like with, about Steven. And then, you know, he just goes on and then Mark takes over and they fly off. And you see that crescent moon, as you said, and he's flying off. And it's such an amazing view. But the fact that they're both working together is really what made this episode more important to me. Along with the very ending scene uh, that we get to see, because that's something we've been speculating from day one, or actually day three or episode three. 
at this point because of Jake Lockley. And uh, we did get Jake Lockley at the very end. And he's a hidden message within and something that I think was in Conchu's back pocket, if I think about it. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, and that leads right into the next one, which is I'm, I'm going to give my other kind of thing that disappointed me about this. Because I've talked about this before is, is okay. we missed and – and I've kind of – it just irks me that this is this is what my problem is. My disappointment is all the fight scenes we didn't get to see. The these massive, mm. really cool had to be a cool. How he was able to kill all those people and we don't yeah. see those. And yeah, I want to know. I want to know yep. if the Jake personality has his own suit. You know, Mark has the Moon Knight armor. We got to yeah. see that. Steven <laughs> has the Mister Knight suit. Does Jake have his own? different is it a more like it, maybe it doesn't have a cape maybe it's more of a i don't know i just i want to know if jake has his own separate suit as well when he fights his moon knight or or is it just the same mm. moon knight costume that i think uh, all right uh let's go back and rewind <laughs> go back to the first episode when at the very end we do see the scene at the very end we he's beating up mm -hmm. the jackal I don't think that was Mark. I think that I, was Jake I, and I'm starting to think you're right because that's that moment. And he's got the red eyes. Okay, I, I didn't the notice the red end. eyes, but yeah. I did I did notice that the, in that moment in a couple of episodes ago when we had Mark and Steven kind of walking through seeing those different memories, right? Steve, uh, Mark mm -hmm. watches that scene and there's a look on his eye almost of where he doesn't recognize what's going on. So I think you might be right. I You might be right that that Moon Knight that we saw beating up the Jackal in the restroom was the Jake was the Jake Lockley. Exactly. And if that's true, then that just means he has – he uses the same armor that Mark uses but with different colored eyes. So it's yeah. highly possible. Yeah, it's dark. It's a darkness. Mm. That's why it's red. And in comparison to Harlow who has – Harrow. Or Harrow. Is it Har Harrow. Okay. Not Harlow. Harrow, who has the purple mystic kind of spell looking things around him through uh, Amit. And I think the, the red eyes are pretty much as much as uh, like kind of like a devilish thing or evil thing. But that's probably the evil side of Mark and Steven mm -hmm. within that particular yeah, you could uh, be right. vessel. You could be or right. Avatar. That could be a, it's possible. Yeah. Which leads me to mine, which was seeing the, uh, what I have thought all along about Conchu as being like a bully with Mark and Steven and using Mark with all his issues within his life to get his quote unquote Moon Knight. You know, I, I still think Conchu is someone to deal with, even though that his, this miniseries is pretty much over, but there will be more of Mark Steven and eventually Jake in the coming MCU I hope events. So. And I think that Jake is going to be a part of this. I still think even though if we do get this right and if Mr. Feige actually does it right, we do get some sort of event where Moon Knight is brought in or we see Mark or Steven wherever he is at at that point. Maybe he's still working for the museum. Maybe he's not, or maybe he's working for something else. Maybe Moon Knight comes out and they're able to use these powers. And they just don't know. And they're still part of that construct of Kanchu. And they start using them and helping out with whatever events are happening. And then they blank out. And then bodies happen. And then we get Jake. And then they have to confront Jake at a certain point. It could be an MCU. Yeah, uh, like I said, that's what that's what concerns me. That's Disney. what concerns me about this whole thing. Is that they're going to have to tell too much story to set up just a brief it, a brief yeah. moment of Moon Knight being part of the group. So I, I'm like I said, I'm 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 hopeful that they're going to find a way to bring him in that's successful and and works. It's got to be some skilled like storybook yeah. telling. I, I, we, that can they have to do how, we can the only speculate on how we can only speculate on how they're going to yeah, do that. Yeah, exactly. So. That was it for me for that okay um I, i've got a couple more things that we haven't discussed we didn't talk about layla yet uh layla becoming Taloret's yep. avatar Same and here. that costume yep that was just incredibly very egyptian with those yep. gold wings and I, <laughs> I love that moment she has with the little girl where the little mm -hmm. girl asked are you an egyptian superhero and layla says 
I am. I just loved it. I yep, I, I, I love that, that we quote. got and there was you know we we had speculation and there was other podcast speculating about Layla possibly becoming a superhero and added to the the Marvel Universe roster. But uh, it's official. She's there, and I hope we get some more of her. I mean, that's one that oh, they yeah. wouldn't really they they could almost bring her into any anything. They wouldn't have to really tell a Anything. lot of backstory yeah. with her because that they just, MCU. oh, she's an Egyptian superhero. Boom. There you go. You know, um, whereas with Moon Knight, yeah. we've got a whole bunch more that we've got yeah. to fill in. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited that hopefully we're going to get to see more of uh, May Calloway. And I think that's how you say her name. Get to see more of her. Mm-hmm. And uh, even though she did say yep. it was a temporary avatar and Tawaret's I yeah I don't think it's going to be I I think this is going to be a more permanent I don't think uh, so. kind of thing so I, I'm I'm excited for that I I love to see her fighting and the way you know the way she used those wings to block the bullets and and everything was just really really great yeah same here and that was actually my next point both of you are are in sync at this point so yeah you know Layla being temporary uh, uh temporary avatar for her tarot just the conversations that she has with her as tarot is taking over her body talking through her that was pretty funny too because you could see her eyes roll back and light up and then you know and tarot it's like oh hi oh this is amazing <laughs> you know it's like crazy and i thought it was funny but effective at least it's something different than what we got with mark and when they had that whole jury thing, you know, the temple or the pyramid of Giza at that point where, where Kanchu was just like, uh, 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 it was like very blurred of, but in this case, it was kind yeah. of more yeah. fluid at this point, you know, something uh, that we didn't see before with Mark in that perspective. And I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. Uh, we only got that. Yeah, door, no, I, know, I love that um, whole. I love that whole conversation she has, where she talks about Layla's father, and Layla's like, "Wait, you you knew my father?" And Tarot says, "Well, of course, I escorted him to the field of reeds." Oh, yeah. And it's just so it's, you see that touching side, and so we see a, a relationship, a God Avatar relationship that's good, that's friendly, that that isn't that's isn't good. being isn't a, a, a like you said, not a bullying <laughs> or a being used because, like you said, Kanchu there in the in the post credit scene, Kanchu admits that uh, that mm-hmm. he never wanted Layla to be his avatar. He always wanted Mark because he wanted the broken. He wanted the broken person to be his avatar. He want yeah, and that, that's why Harrow was uh, attractive to mm-hmm. Kanchu at one point because he was broken as well. But he was broken to the point where he went to the extremism as of Amit, who was even worse because they wanted to destroy the world. At that point, they went to the extreme opposite, very much like if you think of Thanos. If we talk about Marvel perspectives, Thanos wanted to destroy half the universe or the whole multiverse at that point, And that way they could rebuild. And I think Amit was the same way, but within this particular universe and with their own godlike kind of format. That's just my thought. But yeah, to me, it's like, oh, okay, I see a kind of redundant kind of format here but the extremism is getting better and better or greater and greater based upon what we get and i'm curious as to see who the next big bad is for the mcu but i think this is leading towards that that's what the that where we're getting um let's see i've only got a couple more notes that we haven't already talked about just real quick, I feel like Khonshu should have had a big I told you so moment to the other gods because, <laughs> yeah. you know, right there at the beginning, Osiris and they're all talking and they're like, what's happening? And, and Osiris is like, someone's released Ahmet. And I really wanted Khonshu to show up and go, I told you guys. what you know? <laughs> And they all knew it was Harrow. Like all they're like, like, it's Harrow. He's doing this. And we're like, yeah, you had an opportunity three episodes ago to nip this in the bud and you didn't. You know, exactly. so, yeah. uh, but I, I love how it is. It is also Osiris who talks to uh, Layla and says, are you the one who released Khonshu? And that's, a, I didn't bring that up earlier, but I, I had thought about it in this, this last couple of times watching the, the episode is she, she really changes her mind pretty quick. I mean, I, I guess Talaret kind of changed her mind as mm-hmm. well, because, you know, at first Layla was going to try to take on Harrow by herself. And yeah. she says, well, I'm just going to do it by myself. And Talaret says, well, no, you can't. And then the next thing we see we see her, you know, Tarot tells her to, uh, you know, uh, smash the Ashanti and 
so we see her then in the chamber and she gets the Ashanti. And I guess, you know, it's one of those things that, that Marvel just trusts that we understand that she just changed her mind. So, yeah. The last one I would have to say would definitely like the last point that I would have just seeing Jake Lockley. And on, obviously he's speaking Spanish. And I thought that it was amazing that we saw Kanchu. And if, did you notice him in the limo? He had this suit of like Mr. Knight. Yeah, it was very similar to the Mr. Knight suit, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the fact that he had to talk to Harrow and they kind of dispel him and get rid of him. And uh, of all things, Jake speaking Spanish. So yeah, that's, that's another one of those things they're going to have to explain what uh, what that's all about. Um, the ethnicity of who he is and what he does, or is it multiple versions, or maybe he has he's multilingual. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Well, we've heard we've heard him speak English and Spanish, so obviously he's bi- he's at least bilingual. Yeah. So, and we've heard Mark speak Mark speak Arabic. Hindi Arabic, yeah. Uh, um, and then, but Stephen doesn't. So yeah, so we know that they have different different skill sets. So it's it's going to be interesting to see going forward to see what uh, what we get. Like I said, if we get any more of Moon Knight, which I I hope we are. I just I'm just scared that they're going to decide it's too. There's too much. To I don't try think to so. Explain. So I I think the tr- I. If they are smart, they would try to keep it kind of a mystery and just keep it that way. Yeah, we'll see. I Very like much I like said, within the comics, because even in the comics, it's very much a mystery. And you have to realize this is like 50, 60 plus years of mystery, you know? Well, but, and, the, and the character's gone through several different several changes. Like I said, this DID yeah. thing was only the last 20 or 30 years. That wasn't exactly. the, how it yeah. started. So uh, the only other thing, the last thing I had uh, was, was it just was, it's just a little quick little note that I have. Uh, I thought the effect of, of seeing the bullets actually fall out of Mark, I thought mm. was pretty cool. I thought that was a nice yeah. touch to, to see the bullets actually fall onto the, the concrete there as he's, as he's resurrected and brought back to life by Kanchu. Um, the, the only other note that I would have, and I threw this in as fun, anybody who was born in like the late 60s, early 70s will remember the Sam and Isis hour. I, I'm thinking with Layla and Tarawet, that was Isis. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the bad people that are out there called Isis. I'm talking about the Shazam Isis hour in Saturday morning cartoons and TV show. Yeah, and- I think I think TV podcast industries brought up like th- there there wasn't an, an Isis in the in that uh, collection of avatars we had, but they yes. didn't pronounce it as Isis. They pronounced it a little differently, and they think maybe yes. that's because of the whole connotation thing. Exactly. Uh, that's all I had, and I I didn't I didn't get down any quotes that, or just the ones that we've already had. So I do. So I'll go through them if you want. Yeah. Uh. Well, this one is Conchu to Layla saying, "You need a plan, little bug. What I offer." Dot dot dot. And Layla goes, "I don't care what you offer. Mark didn't trust you. I don't trust you. We'll work together without me enslaving myself." And then Conchu says, "We must rebind Amit." And then they just move on to the conversation of only the av- avatars can actually do this. So it, that was very much a binding agreement at that point between Kanchu and Layla. And Layla saying flat out, I don't want to have anything to do with you because you're an asshole. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, next up would be Mark II. And that would be Steve when he was uh, in the sands when he was thrown over. You are the only really superpower that I had. Meaning that he didn't really care about the whole Moon Knight thing or anything else. He thought Steve was his superpower from when he was a kid. And that meant a lot to me because basically he put, he created Steve in his head to deal with all the bad issues and to get away. And that was so heart wrenching for me because it's like I'm making up a person to handle all the crap that I can't handle with. In his head, and because he he had a troubled childhood, and you know now he accepts him, pretty mm-hmm. much like a brother, and it's pretty much who he is anyway. So I, I just love that. Next up would be Steve saying, "We do come as a package deal." <laughs> that was to uh, Kanchu when they come back to life and they are working together. Kanchu is not happy about that, <laughs> and I just love that the fact that Stephen comes out. It's like you know because. You know, when Kanji starts talking to them, 
he's talking to Mark, and then, you know, Steven comes out, and he's Mr. Knight, and he goes, but we do come out as a package deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that was I, good. I just love that. And uh, uh, you already said it before in Arabic, the girl says, are you an Egyptian hero? And Layla says, yes, I am. That was perfect. Straight and succinct. Perfect for the episode. And that was it. That, that was it. the only uh, uh, quotes that I had. Okay. All right. Well, uh, feedback. Well, we might get feedback next week for this particular episode because we have a friend that's going to send us out some something. Uh, but uh, we will talk about what we're going to do next. And what we're going to cover next is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So I'm sure all of you have gone out and seen this movie. I've seen it a couple of times, and I... I think you've seen it a couple of times too, Steve. Yeah, right? I've, I've seen it definitely. Yeah, I've seen it once. I'm, I'm planning on seeing it again before we before we podcast about it. So yeah, I'm, awesome. I mean, it's it's so good. Like, there's just so much to talk about, and I can't I can't wait for us to break it down. All right. So with that, we'll move on to uh, a little bit of comic news, which I have. I think we spoke about this last week too. We lost Neil Adams, and but this week we lost George Perez too. And George Perez was an artist as well and uh george died of cancer and he's been dealing with this for the past three years with neil adams apparently he died due to compl complications of sepsis which is really upsetting and mm -hmm. uh you know i i met neil adams once i met george perez once and both were very nice my first impression of neil uh it was nice, but my attitude about artists that, that think of everything for money, but honestly, the man did a lot for people that needed the money because a lot of artists didn't really gain their royalties or own any of their artwork. So I, I have to give him credit for where credit is due. Mm -hmm. Neil Adams, uh, you could actually listen to uh, a great podcast, and this was originally on Fat Man on Batman, and Kevin Smith actually released this on... Fat Man Beyond. And it's a five hour podcast, mind you. Well, with me, I got to go to Jersey this past weekend and uh, go down to the 25th anniversary of uh, Jay and Silent Bob's Secret Stash and meet up with Kevin Smith himself, who does Fat Man Beyond, as well as Smodcast, Smod Castle, all that good stuff. And but Neil Adams was on that, and they uh, I got to listen to that when I went down and came back because it takes about two hours each way in order to get to and from, so it's like four hours total. And I just listened to Neil's stories as uh, Kevin was going through it. Now, mind you, the man is very present in what he does, he knows he's an accomplished artist, and he was, and he always will be. But the thing is, is that he gained rights for a lot of artists that are out there to get money for the work that they've done. Because at the time, they were like, if you look at the people who created Superman, and they didn't get paid. Same thing with Phil Finger. He was able to get the rights and get them their money due, which was amazing. Now, mind you, I understand at a convention, people have to make their money, but... When I said to him, I said, I really appreciate your artwork because I grew up on it. He understood that at that point. And he signed my, my picture that I gave him of him with the Batmobile and everything. But the thing is to understand the man and what he had done for comics and artists, you have to go watch. You could actually watch it on YouTube, but also listen to it on Fat Man Beyond. And that would be like a five and a half hour long podcast. So sit tight. If you have a whole day to listen to it, do that in segments because it's great. He has great stories. I'm not saying he was a great man, but I loved everything that he had done. He did a lot for artists out there that are struggling. And I just love what he had to do. That was Neil Adams. Uh, George Perez, very pleasant man when I got to speak to him. Loved his artwork. Just the same. But he's missing and he's gone. Mm. Next up would be, uh, well, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So, Steve, both you and I actually had seen it on opposite ends of uh, the United States. 
<laughs> well, I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle of the United States, but okay, it's close yeah, enough. Yeah, well, well, close <laughs> enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I, like I said, I really loved it. I can't wait to talk about it. I can't wait to go see it again. I can't wait to to watch it continue. It's it's I'm, you know, I'm not gonna put it up there as my favorite Marvel movie at this point. It's it's definitely up there in uh, okay. in the the top echelon. But it's it's uh, you know a brief non spoiler kind of review uh it's it's really dark so just it is. Be, be prepared for and uh there's at least one very there's one moment again i won't spoil anything there <laughs> where i audibly gasped in the theater really and like yeah i mean there, there was only like maybe nine people in the theater um, uh, but I like and so I'm, I'm sure nobody could hear me from where I was sitting but uh, I audibly gasped when this one particular person came on screen so oh uh, okay cool I can't I can't wait to talk no about spoilers. it we're, no spoilers we'll I'm talk about this uh, on a... no no we're, we're gonna talk about this next week when we're when we're gonna do a spoiler full review of it but uh, uh, exactly but, uh, it's it's really really good. Uh, like I said, I won't I won't put it up there as my number one Marvel movie, but it's it's definitely in the in the conversation for being top five. So awesome. Well, I, I got to see this particular movie when I went to uh, the Atlantic Highlands Movie House in Highlands, New Jersey, yesterday, or it was Saturday, obviously the seventh of May, and. Uh, while attending the 25th anniversary of Jay and Silent Bob's Secret Stash in Red Bank, New Jersey. So it's not too far from where we, uh, where they filmed Clerks, which was at the Quick Stop. And I actually took a visit there and I took a picture of the actual Quick Stop where Smod Castle is that the one and only Ben Beck will actually do a particular pod, live podcast, hopefully, at the uh, Smod Castle for the next level online radio podcast network. And, uh, yeah, I went to go see there. Uh, went to go see it at the particular movie house that actually Kevin was at on Thursday night, and saw it with his wife and his daughter Harley. And uh, I got to meet them this particular weekend. Not Harley. Harley was missing. I don't know where she was, but uh, I got to see it, and I really enjoyed the particular movie. And I loved it for all the raminess. Of the movie because Steve, we will go into mm -hmm. deep depths about this particular movie, about how Raimi this movie is between Bruce Campbell, all the Evil Dead shots and how they are, how he films everything because this is a Raimi movie. This is a Sam Raimi film, nonetheless, and it's one of my favorite Sam Raimi films right now so mm -hmm. far. So uh, I really enjoyed it, and it was a really good. MCU movie, it was very dark, and I think this is what we're going to get from now on. We're going to get movies that are going to be a little bit darker, a little bit stranger, not to put, you know, strange in Doctor Strange, but we, I had a good time with this particular movie, and it did pull on the heartstrings and did pull on certain things, and uh, if you did see the movie, know that nobody's really truly dead in Marvel. Just remember that. So they will always come back. So with that, I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels Podcast. And we'll talk to you on the next panel. Later. Get Good night. <laughs> <laughs>